Once you've cleaned it, remember to mark top and bottom on it again. Grab your template. The first template we're going to use, if you look at them, one is a lot bigger than the other. We want the smaller of the two, which is this one. Now find the centre of your piece of timber. Set a marking gauge up to that mark. And as we did in the last video, scribe a line, turn the timber around, scribe another line, and if it's the dead centre, those lines should meet. And then scribe down, not heavily, just a light mark down there. Pick up your template. This has got the centre line marked on the template. Line it up so the centre line's pointing up. And that's going to be the front because it's the narrowest one. And that's the back. So line your front up with your front and your back up with your back and align this centre line with that centre line. Once you're happy with that process, grab some double-sided tape. Double-sided tape on the back. That goes down on the front. Take the backing tape off. The other thing you can do if you don't want to use double-sided tape is put some brads in or very shallow staples. But whatever you do, <clears throat> make sure you line it up back to back, front to front, and make sure these centre lines line up. Once you're happy with that, pop it in the vise. That gives pressure so that double-sided tape will adhere to both surfaces. All right, over to the drill press and the force and bit should be still set up. And then when we come back, we go back over to the bandsaw. Let's go. And as we did when we were doing the template, have a piece of sacrificial backing board down. If we haven't moved it, that should be at the right depth. And this then will guide the force and a bit where we want it to go. Place it in there, hold that firmly, turn it on, and cut all the way through in one go. Same with the other end. Take it slowly. Once that's done, you take the template off and we'll go over to the bandsaw. If there's any glue there, remove it because we don't want it catching on the fence of the bandsaw. And the bandsaw, hopefully if no one's touched it, is going to be set at exactly the same width that we cut this one at. If there's someone else in the shop, double check to make sure they haven't moved it. And then with the top, with the top to the fence, slice another lot. Be careful when it comes to these holes because the bandsaw will jump. That's what we've got now. We've got a pencil case with four pieces. We've got a top, we've got a bottom, we've got a slide, and we've got a body. And we'll line them all up to the marks so they're all lined up the same way they were when they were in a solid block. Top we put to one side, the slide, get the longer of the two, the longer one, and with double-sided tape, put that onto the slide. And that's how we want that. So the centre lines line up, and these holes line up with the edges. So this was on here, and then when we did a resaw on the bandsaw, this bit came out. Now replace this onto the body 
that we've just taken the top off of. You just feel in there with your fingers to make sure it's all aligned properly. Clamp it down on the vise. That's the body. That's the top part that's going to accept the sliding lid. Now with this one, I'm going back to the drill press and with a force and a bit, I'm drilling out this extended hole here. So we've got these two holes we drilled originally. Now I'm extending that back to here. Now we have three holes, one there, one there, one there, and two on the body. And like I did with when I was making the template in the previous video, I've got to remove this waste. And for me, I'm going to use a jigsaw. You could use, <clears throat> you could use a fret saw, you could use a coping saw, you could use a keyhole saw, or a very thin Japanese saw maybe. But for me, <clears throat> Excuse me, a jigsaw. It's much easier to just get the waste out. Stay as close to this line as possible without touching it. That's removed most of the waste. Now it's back to the router with that profile cutter and we're gonna run the bearing on the template and clean up the inside here. And there we have them. The smaller one, take this template off. Remove any of the glue that's on there. And take the time to clean any glue off the template because if you leave it on there, it's going to be disastrous when you want to go and use it next time. At this stage, if you like, you can lightly, a bit of 180 or something or other, just sand on the inside if it's not a really nice finish. If it's a good finish, just leave it. And this one, leave on for the moment. Because next week, when we come back to putting it all together, I'll show you how to make the slide recess, how to make the top, and put this all together. Because at the moment, I can hear some questions. You're going, how come he's got long bits and short bits, and how's it going to look? It's going to look fantastic. One little bit I will add, if you want to do a contrasting lid, while you've got that bandsaw set up at that width that you cut this one off and you cut this one off, get another piece of timber as I've done here and run it through the bandsaw at the same time. So that way you can have a contrasting lid if that's what you want to do. So until we meet again and we finally put this puppy to rest, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. And if you want to watch the extended version of this video and download it, clock onto my Patreon page and find out how you can do that. And don't forget, if you already are a patron, this video can be downloaded within 30 days of me posting it on my page. So until I have your company in the shed very, very soon, look after yourselves and enjoy your woodwork. Bye for now.